Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Did I ever get a score at Value Village? It's about flipping time. I mean, their prices are going outrageous on everything. The last time I was in there looking at stair equipment, they had a Sony amp in there they wanted $90 for it. It's like, there's nothing special about this amp other than the fact that it's old. And yet, uh, an amp of similar age in silver, they want 14 or 15 bucks, something like that. Anyways, so I was in there uh, yesterday and I come across this NAD amp, uh, it's amp and preamp, right, uh, built together, 3120 is the model, and the 4020A tuner with it, as well, we also got, over here, the Denon 5-disc carousel CD, which also came with all this stuff. For a whole grand total, with my wife's discount, I walked out of there $27 and changed tax in. They were asking $40, okay, plus tax, but my wife gets a discount, so, you know, it's like, nice. So, uh, I'm like, this is so cool. Um, we knew enough that, you know, there is a guy actually on a bench uh, in the one room area uh, that tests out a lot of stuff. I don't know how far he goes with it. Um, but, um, anyways, when I plug the stuff into the wall pl plug outside of that area where we get to test things, nothing was working. Like, no power, nothing, direct to the wall socket, nothing. So, I guess somebody blew the breaker. So, anyways, he replugged it in all for me to verify to make sure. Because there's, there's no way I was going to pay 40 bucks, let alone even with a discount, for dead stuff, right? Like, that's crazy because there's no refunds or exchanges on this stuff. So, uh, anyways, everything fired up as far as powering up, and I thought, well, can't be that bad. I mean, if there is a problem with the amp, I could always fix it, right? Turns out, nothing wrong with any of this stuff. Everything works absolutely perfect. And I'm like, sweet! Now, this is not just a score video, it's also a review video of the NAD equipment. Um, I could care less about the Denon. Hey, it's a carousel CD and it works. You know, hey, there you go. As far as the NAD goes, though, uh, this thing uh, can run 2, 4, 6, or 8 ohm speaker load. Um, by factory default, it's set at 4 ohms, so 2 and 4. But if you want to run 6 or 8 ohm speakers, you have to switch the switch on the back. There's a little screw that you got to undo, and you flick it to the 8 ohm side, and then you can run 6 or 8 ohm speakers. Um, and um, it's, I think it was 50 watts, I think it is, um, at... Um, the 8 ohm range and at uh, two, 2 and 4 at least, uh, you're looking at upwards to 75 watts. Um, but uh, I even got the original manuals too uh, with this. Oh, here we go. Here's the spec sheet. Um, at 2 ohms, 75 watts. Um, it says per channel here. 4 ohms, 55 watts. And at 8 ohms, 50 watts. So. Half the homage, you get an extra 5 watts. Woohoo! Um, it has clipping power. Max continuous power per channel at 8 ohms is 35 watts per channel. So, you know, that, that's still pretty good. That's like 70 watts max. And that's like, you know, so there's a lot of headroom. It even has a soft clipping system in it, so you can really overdrive the amp and not clip anything. Um, and that's for, I believe, the 8 ohm side. But, um, now, the funny thing I found with this amp that was really interesting. Now, I'm, I'm no stranger to NAD. Um, back in the 80s, where this generation is actually from, according to the Internet, uh, this was about 85 to 87 for this particular amp, anyway. Um, I had a NAD uh, system, and uh, I paid dearly for it back then. I was into doing a lot of trading and stuff. Um, so, I don't remember if it was a trade deal or if I paid cash and trade or just cash or just trade anyway regardless it cost me enough and I loved it fantastic and it actually had bass mid and treble in it and it was lower power on the wattage but see NAD they have uh, basically a low wattage but an extremely high current and high voltage output so you really get a lot more punch than what you're uh, paying for right so you're you're definitely getting more than what you're paying for in, in total um, so that's really good stuff and very clean stuff. Um, you know, so 50 amps NAD power 
can sound like several hundred watts, you know, just because of that high voltage, uh, high uh, output system uh, that they do, uh, which other companies uh, do as well or did as well. Uh, Harman Kardon was another one. Uh, that was like that because uh, I had a Harman Kardon system, etc. Now, anyway, so what I found strange about this thing, and you're going to find strange by looking at the amplifier itself, uh, which is this unit, there's no bass or treble or even bass mid and treble controls. This is high fidelity stuff for, I guess, the purest sound people uh, that don't want to mess around with bass, mids, and trebles. Now, you can put an EQ on, you know, and you can contour your sound and get more out of it, that sort of stuff. Um, if you're really knowledgeable know what you're doing and you know how to read a service manual, um, there is control pots inside that you can actually mess with, apparently, from what I've been finding out from information. Um, that uh, you could you could essentially increase the bass and treble or reduce them whatever um, I have the system right now hooked up to a set of uh, paradigm uh, shelf speakers which are very small there's um, two woofers two tweeters in each speaker they're just little corner kind of things like um, these things right here um, and you know they're not supposed to be very loud but they can handle a lot of wattage um, and I'm, I'm not going to play anything on this because, you know, copyright and all that other junk, right? But take my word for it. It is great sounding even with these little Paradigm speakers for in here. But I am uh, in the market of looking for a set of Paradigm monitors or a set of EPI energies. Um, something that is going to give me a little bit more throat uh, out of it. So you, you will need speakers that, you know, are designed to actually output a bit of, you know, bass and treble, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, I was originally going to put this in our on our home setup uh, out in the living room, but you know I thought, well, I'd rather have it in here. And same as the Denon amp, I'm actually decided to keep, or sorry, not the Denon amp, Denon CD player. Um, the Denon CD player I'm actually going to keep in here, and it's in place uh, on my PA from my TIAC uh, player. So this way I've got my full main stereo right here. So I've got my cassette, my CD, my radio, I'm all good to rock, just need some big speakers now. Uh, and then the Denon Carousel, um, I'm going to put it, I've put it onto my PA system, so if I record my own music CDs, I can just throw one in it, not like I need a five disc carousel for that, but, you know, um, any of my own music or music that I do up, I can uh, play it back on that uh, through the monitor speakers that I have, my Mackies and make sure my sound quality is where it needs to be. So that's where that's actually going to live, um, on there. But um, if you are a uh, fidelity freak as far as hi-fi stuff goes, uh, and you want quality stuff, I mean, NAD is definitely there. And NAD is still in business. They're still producing stuff. Um, and they are really fantastic uh, product lines. And they are in it for the long haul. Like, you're, you're talking 1980s tech. This thing is clean. There's no static. I didn't have to clean anything, um, take anything apart. I didn't have to recap it. None of that. It's just fantastic. Um, it does have a balance control for left and right, which is actually part of the volume control. Um, it's actually the little small portion here, the little ring, so you got to hold your volume in place and then put your balance so if you find that your stereo balance is out a little bit and you want to just tweak things in more balanced uh, you can do that I've never had to worry about doing that so I always leave my balance control on my audio equipment right dead center all the time so I'm not worried about that but I did find it rather odd that NAD made something with no bass and treble or no bass mid and treble controls um, that's kind of neat um, it's definitely interesting um, but I like it. I think it's great. Um, as far as what it's actually worth, I did some research online and depending on the condition of it, um, and that goes for the tuner as well, um, eBay is selling this on average of about $90 upwards to, could be three to $400. In the condition these are in, these are definitely on the higher side of the value because they're absolutely cherry. So, you know, that's that's good to know. So that was one heck of a great score from Value Village. 
Um, I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes out for more stuff like that because uh, then I can actually get into starting to flip stuff because old vintage stereo equipment, believe it or not, a lot of it is going for some major dollars. Um, I've seen Marantz amps at the Hawk Shop with a busted glass on the tuner uh, going for like two grand, you know, and it's like you could pick something like that up at, you know, your local recycling place for, you know, 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 20 bucks. And, you know, as long as it works and functions, you know, and it's relatively clean, you could flip that into a pawn shop, get some good money for it. They're still going to make their profit. You know, they're, they're in the business to, you know, make money too, if you know what I mean more off of us than, than anything but you still get a, a really good flip price or sell it privately you know or sell it on eBay whatever you know and really make some money um, so that, that's quite cool anyways um, that's what I got for you on this video guys so thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it definitely stay tuned for more stuff I've got more videos planned over the course of the next few days we're only at Wednesday so you know, we got a few more days uh, before the weekend, and um, I'm going to just keep on going with some stuff that I haven't been doing that I need to get done for videos for you guys. I'm also making a lot of changes in the studio as well, which you're going to see uh, soon too, uh, just because I need to make space, I need to organize stuff, and, you know, um, it's getting a little cluttered in here. <laughs> but anyway, catch you in the next one. See ya.